Hello guys Welcome to this tutorial JavaScript numbers So in this tutorial I'm going to talk a little bit about numbers in JavaScript So to do that let's start our server that's our browser sync as we installed the, in the as we installed in the previous tutorial so uh, please if you have not yet done that please go back and see what it's all about um try to install it so here as you can see there i'm going to actually start the browser sync in my javascript folder where i have the index.html and the index.js files so let me go ahead and start the server as you can see it opens in the web browser this is my default that is chrome web developer tools a web browser i mean so actually the server is up running as you can see there so now so let's go ahead and talk a bit about numbers in javascript but before as you can see there i linked my java my javascript file within the html index.html as you can see there so now i can write any javascript code here and it will directly reflect to this page actually running on the port this 3000 so let's go ahead and talk a bit about numbers but of please if you have not yet subscribed go back and do that please okay so javascript implements numbers as floating point value that is they are attaining decimal values as well as whole numbers so it does not care about like you cannot you don't need to declare something called integer or float or doubles or so on if you, you are from c or c plus plus or any other language you understand what i mean so just declare it's just a number so now the basic use of number so to make a new number a simple initialization surfaces so let us see here. Then, as we saw in the how to declare variable before let me just call this foo equals to zero i'm actually declaring a variable called foo and initialize it to be zero or whatever number you want so let me actually go and, and print this number in the web browser so here we are going to use a document property but the dom is covered in the next module so document dot write is actually a function is this one is actually a document property and write is a method so we are accessing the html document and we are applying the right method which is nothing but function to it to actually display a content in the html page a javascript content in the html page so this foo if we want to display it in our html page this is how we are going to do it this actually means in the document using the property or the method right print this foo in our corresponding html page so save the changes let's go to back to our web page and see what is there you can see the zero there but again you notice that we did not refresh our browser or something like that the browser sync is actually there to watch all the files as we can see the watching files so we don't need to refresh our browser each time we 
save the document so as we save it automatically reload the page so as you can see the zero is actually is now there so let's go ahead and try to modify that to be something like nine and just save as you save it automatically reload as you can see there so we directly have the nine the nine there so going back to our visual switcher code so i hope you got the point guys so after you have made your number you can then modify it as necessary so there's no problem numbers can be modified or assigned using the operator defined within javascript so this equal is actually call, called the assigned operator so it's not it does not mean that foo is equal to nine this actually means you are actually assigning this because in your memory what happens this foo is actually is a as a label in your ram in your memory that hold or keep this value nine for now so just to identify this number so we're actually assigning this nine to our full function so we are going to cover operators later but let's assume we can do something like this full plus equals to let's just say six so let's save the changes and see what it prints on our web page you see actually 15 so this means full plus equals to six actually means take the previous value of full so this expression is exactly something like this so full equals to this and then plus this so now this one this means in now this full value will actually be the value that it was it holding before that is the nine and then add six to that value and then assign it to that memory location holding the that is labeled with full uh, name so i hope you got the point so but of course we are going to cover that later of course you can also put plus and um, there's no problem or minus or times um, as you want but we are going to cover operators later on in this course so number literals define the number value in particular so they appear as a set of digits of varying length so you can put any length of number there so there's no problem it will work so as you can see there so negative literal numbers have a minus sign before the digit so if you want to like put a negative number here just put a minus sign that will be fine and then save the changes and then if you go to web browser and then you can just see the minus sign there so that's how it is so 14 points literal number contains one decimal point and may optionally use the e notation that's for with the, the, the character e so if you want something decimal you can just put as normal as usual and then just save the changes you can if you go to the web browser you can just see that the number is just there as expected so that's how number works in javascript so an integer literals may be prepended with zero to indicate that the number is base eight that is eight and nine are not octal digits so and it found cause the integer to be read and in the normal base 10 so an integer literal may also be found with prefix 0x to indicate the hexadecimal number so if i put here 
x and then some number this is actually an hexadecimal number if you are familiar with the, the, the notation so and what you will notice is that it prints actually mm, 87 which is the decimal equivalent of this 57 which is a in hexadecimal so this prefix 0x means that the for the number that follows is actually in hexadecimal and what this brother actually prints is only decimal numbers so that's why it converted that to a decimal numbers and then print of course if you change and put maybe eight you will see that you will just print eight which is of course eight in decimal please not in hexadecimal but normally it should not appear there because hexadecimal is only from zero to seven so I hope you got the point from that so the math object so unlike strings arrays and dates numbers in javascript aren't objects so they don't contain any method that can be accessed by the normal dot notation instead the static math object provides usual numeric functions and con constant as its method and properties so as a static object, the math object does not need to be initiated in order to use its methods. So the methods and property of math object are referenced using the dot operator in the usual way. So, for example, so I hope you got the point from what we are just from saying let's just put that into practice so let me just say vowel this is actually a vowel the value of pi as everybody knows this we write math dot pi again let me explain what is going there so this math is actually what we call an object so remember object as we saw in the next tutorial so this pi is actually a property of this math object that actually returns the value of pi into this var pi variable so this is the math object so we can just say if you want to print that then not just save it and go to the browser as you can see we have the value of pi there so the math is actually an object that contains some useful mathematic object and method that we can apply to that and then it returns the value of pi we reference it with the dot notation so i hope you got the point from there but of course if it's a, it looks strange as we go forward you will get the point so don't worry so much about that now so we can also take another example let's just say the let me just call it square So the square root of let's just say three equals to math. So if you want to compute that, you can just there are some functions that can actually be useful to quickly compute that. So you just put math dot sqrt that means square root of three that this will actually this will return to you the square root of three so as we 
the Sodis will return the square root of 3. So let's just save it and then put the square root of, and then try to display it here. So that is SQL sorry of 3 and then save the changes and then look, go to the browser see what it prints so this is actually the square root of 3 so the the property sqrt takes what we call an argument in our case is 3 and it access in the math object so we are going to talk a bit about objects later but i hope you got a bit a point from the next tutorial from the previous tutorial so math dot sqrt so this one is the second property that we learned the sqrt 3 actually returns the square root of the past argument so this number that we are passing here is actually called an argument so if we put 9 and go to the browser you see that 3 so it's very it can be very useful sometimes when you want to compute the square root of a given number or you want to get a best approximation of pi you can then just access it from so say for example if i want to compute the area of a circle we know that it's the radius times the radius let's assume that the radius is five times five then times the value of pi but if you put three dot 14 it will be you know that the precision will not that so good so you can just do that for times you can directly of course even multiply it like this math dot pi that will be fine you directly return you them area of that the radius as we can see there so i hope you got the point from that so methods we also have another property of the math object so let me just call this let me just print something like or let me just call this like this and then apply the math dot sale so as you can see the, the in the description it takes in numbers in parameters so as you hover the parentheses it also tells you what should go there so let me just do that and put a number there say eight dot five and let print that value that is a return to that going to our web browser you see that we have nine so what is actually going on here this cell it actually take a floats in this actually a floats that's a decimal number with a dot a return the least integer greater than the number passed as an argument i hope you got the point so it's actually some kind of rounded or yeah so let me just put another number say nine dot seven and save the changes you see that we have 10 so it can be sometimes useful in some cases so you may find ways to apply that we also have what we call the flow so instead of points putting cell here or let me just create another one called floor using the math again you see that the math have many properties that we can that can be very useful for us and just put a number c 2.7 and then let's go ahead and print that say floor and display that in our web browser you see that here we have two so what's actually going on here 
So this flow, it takes a float and returns the greatest integer less than the number passed as an argument. So, so it actually returns, uh, you bear with me that is true in this case. So it returns the greatest integer less than the number passed as argument. So we also have the max method. Let's just see great the greatest or the max. You know, let's just call it max and call the math again, the math object and the property max, which takes two numbers in parameters in as arguments and then return the max the max between the two numbers. So let me just go ahead and display that max in our web browser. As we can see there, of course, it's 25. So uh, there are many, there are many of them. So we cannot cover all of that in this tutorial, but I will give you, I will leave a link below the description of this video, or you can even visit the JavaScript website to get a bit about the math object and properties. So also we have the parser int and the parser float. So parser int and parser float are JavaScript functions that convert string into numbers. So if these functions are given a string of alphanumeric characters from A to Z, capital or small, to convert then both returns num that is not a number meaning so let's go ahead and explain what is actually going on here let's just see a var x let me declare it here so that we can just display it from here x equals to parcel int and here i'm going to give a string but which is actually a number not a letter remember x let's go ahead and see what it shows in our browser you see it so this parse int actually take a string because this one is actually a string since it's within the double quotes so and returns the integer so it cannot return 8.5 because it passes it into integer so the greatest integer that it can return is actually 8 so that's why it returns 8 but if you put a if it was instead let me just see pass float Let's go ahead and see what it shows. You see 8.5, which is actually a number. It prints it as a number, not as a string. So this pass float takes a string as argument and returns the float number. But as we said, if you put any character here, say A, let's go ahead and see what it display. N A N. That is not a number because this one is actually a character you will not understand that but in some case as we saw so if you just put a number so it will return you a corresponding number so that's the use of parse in a parse flow so there are also some useful properties of math object are most commonly used constants or functions so you have the e that returns the e constant so if we say math dot e let's go ahead and see what it displays this actually the value of e that's the exponential and pi as we saw and so on 
so i hope guys you got the point from these numbers in javascript so that's the basic we are going to discover more as we go forward in this course please don't forget to subscribe if you have not yet done that and then wishing you all the best please share the video if it was helpful to you bye